look at the list. In fact, there are seven compliments that God gives this efficient type Christian. They worked hard, they persevered, that means they were patient, they were steadfast. He said, you do many good deeds. Number three, you can't stand the evildoers. You just don't like to see people committing sin. Number four, you have discernment. You, you've not been fooled by the false preachers. You're not a phony. You recognize phonies. There's something about you. You have discernment. You're a discerning Christian. You've endured for the sake of my name. You really love my name. You honor my name. You've not grown weary. Number seven, you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. You hate them. And Nicola taught, you could do whatever you please with the body as long as your spirit was right with God. He said, you hate this just like I hate it. He said, you're one with me on this hatred against sin. He said, you hate corruption. You hate fornication just as I do. Now that's good. All right, look what we have so far. We've got an Ephesian Christian who's got a servant heart. He's a persevering man or woman. He's not thinking of giving up on the faith. He's holding to the precious name of Jesus. They're doing many wonderful good Christian deeds. They're discerning the phony stuff. They're avoiding it. They're hating sin, hating compromise with the passion. And yet God says, I've got something against you. Now that's awesome to know that God can have something against you when you hate sin, when you're holding to his name, when you're persevering, when you've not let go and you're not even weary. And yet God says, I've got something against you. That's awesome. And that hit me the other day. God in the secret closet said, hey, I got something against you. He said, Lord, how can you have anything against me, man? I've preached sin like risk of my reputation, man. I've preached against sin. I'm not weary of you. I love you in your name. I... He's saying, in spite of all these good things I can say about you, you're fallen. You're in need of repentance. You see, God's going to start opening some of these things to us. He's going to show us. It is not going back to your kind of love, not to the zeal and the enthusiasm you had when you are first saved. You see, many people are not even coming to the Lord getting a sound salvation anymore. I'll say the majority of people are getting saved today in the church of Jesus Christ are coming out of selfish interest. They're coming out of a sense of avoiding the wrath of God. I don't want to go to hell. They're coming because people are preaching, come to Jesus and you'll find happiness, you'll heal your marriage, you'll heal your body. It's self-interest. And because of that self-interest, we have not seen the cross. So it's not going back to something you had. Let me read it in the original Greek and maybe it'll come out a little clearer. Here is what I have against you. I'm reading in the original Greek. You don't love me as at first. Remember how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and do what was done at first. He said, you have all the doctrines of the apostles. You have all the hatred of sin that you're supposed to have. You have all the makings. You still do the deeds. You're doing the thing by rote. You're doing all these things. But in the process, you've lost the love that they had. If we had the love of Jesus Christ, the apostles had, we would be on our face weeping. There would be such an awe. There would be such a reverence. The Bible said the trumpet shall sound. He said he's coming as a thief in the night in the twinkling of an eye. When that is, I don't know. But I know he said we're to watch. We're to expect his coming. And that's the hope. And the church is losing that hope. Is there anything in this world worth holding on to now in light of that? Is there anything you own worth taking your mind and your time and your attention? The scripture says, if you love the world, the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The hope is not in you anymore. You've fallen from that expectancy. Those disciples expected him at any moment. And they worked and they lived in the light of that. Not in fear, but out of love he's coming. Not afraid of hell. No, they were saying, oh, I want to see him be with him. <laughs> in that, don't you have that this morning? Are you losing that? He says, go back to that. When he's saying go back, you go back to that expectancy of the first church. That kind of love for me that wanted to be with me, that expected me at any moment. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have this apostolic love for Jesus, all the preaching to condemn you to read your Bible will not work. And if you're not doing it, you better check your love. If you're not into this book, hungry, if you're not praying daily seeking His faith, you better check your love. All this talk about being faithful, all the hatred towards sin, and all these other Ephesian effects, these seven Ephesian complimentary things about you mean nothing because you don't love Him. 
Because if you loved him, you'd be in his word. If you loved him, you'd be talking to him. You'd be with him in his presence. Wouldn't you? So what good is me trying to trying to say, hey, I used to go around and say, have you been reading your Bible lately? Have you really been praying? I just talked to my staff. And I, I just don't feel I can do that much anymore. I should be saying, do you really love him?